Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. About a year ago, I published a, a video on some glue nozzles suitable for the use uh, with the Domino 500. And I was just learning 3D printing. I was really getting marginally acceptable prints. And I think I alluded to that in the video. But these are some of those nozzles that I printed out. And I'll provide a link to that video if you want to watch it up in, I don't know, somewhere above. That project got put on the back burner for other projects and I've picked it back up again and I've made version two of these Domino glue nozzles. Some of the feedback I got were, hey, I wish you made these for the Domino 5 or 700, the Domino XL, and also you missed the four millimeter Domino. I still don't have a four millimeter Domino. I did change my model to improve my print quality and functionality and but I did add the 700 dominoes much longer and I've made some improvement to the nozzles that I think will uh, are, be, are beneficial so let me just show you what I've done hey this is uh, my version 2.0 for you for me it's probably about version 95 but for you version 2.0 of the domino glue nozzles what are the changes that I made? I made several improvements. Uh, first of all, if you'll notice back here, I added the Domino XL nozzles. Uh, so I've got eight, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter uh, Domino nozzles. Uh, these are much longer. And as I was doing testing of these, I figured, all right, there's a problem here. And one of those problems deals with, let's see if I can break one of these uh, original ones apart. I've already pre-broken this. But if you look, what, what I had here was a loft, internal loft inside this uh, nozzle. And the, as it got closer to the end, the cavity got larger and larger and larger. It wasn't a problem with these small nozzles, but when I got to looking at the large, when I started getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and especially with this 14 millimeter nozzle, I think I got one originally here, the cavity on this thing was just huge. And it, 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 it took a while to fill. It tended to drain back down to the bottle, which yeah, ideally you would want to do that. It didn't ever completely drain, but every time I pick it up and put it back down, it took some squeezing to fill that cavity out before I ever got the glue to exit the nozzles, uh, exit holes. So I changed that. I went from a loft to just a hole all the way up to a channel at the top. I have changed the, the hole configuration. When I got to the longer and larger nozzles, such as the 14 versus the 8, the I had reasonable glue distribution on the smaller nozzles, but the longer they were and the bigger they were, that became more problematic to get a good even glue distribution. So I added another row of exit holes on both sides and I increased the number of them. And the variable spacing, so I got better glue distribution on these uh, these longer nozzles in particular. So that's improvement number two. Improvement number three. I had a lot of print quality issues. I don't know whether it'll show up on the camera here. Maybe. But this is quite a rough surface where this, where this was. I mean, I tried, actually, I think I printed this thing down, upside down with supports holding the, holding the lid. Tried doing it this way. It left a rough inside. I had six of one, half dozen the other. One surface for me was rough. Some of it was probably my inexperience with the 3D printer because I hadn't completely dialed it in yet uh, before I did those prints. Uh, another change I made uh, was I went, this is PLA, this is PETG. I have actually broken these things. One, during, using the smallest nozzle in a glue up, you just had very minimal support areas down there. I tried putting a, a larger fillet. It, it helped, but 
the five millimeter, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. Uh, they, they just can break easily. Uh, particularly if you let go of your bottle or you twist your bottle while it's inserted in the mortise. And I haven't noticed that with this PET G, which is uh, the PLA is much more brittle and PET G is much more ductile. So I think that was an improvement. Another thing you've probably already noticed is these don't have caps on them. I made the nozzles and the cap separate such that you can replace either the cap or the nozzle. And the nozzles, I used, I changed the o-ring size. I think I changed the o-ring size. I don't remember on the original, but I went to a 10 millimeter OD, six millimeter ID o-ring. And when I insert this o-ring in here, it sits just slightly proud, which is what you want for a good seal. For the, I also uh, changed the, uh, to heat set inserts. Uh, the inserts I used were M4 uh, by six by six millimeter, and six millimeter OD, six millimeter long. And I made these holes a little deeper, so uh, there's room for the, for the excess material when you set this in place uh, to go to the bottom and not prevent you from going all the way in. Now, I set these in place using a soldering iron with the temperature set at 310 degrees Celsius. And it took about five or six seconds for that heat to transfer down to the tip and then insert the heat set insert. And one of the things you want to do is make sure that those, as it goes in, make sure they're slightly recessed from the base of the nozzle. And you want to make sure when you put it, you verify this by screw, uh, to make sure that that screw is reasonably square or normal to the uh, face of that base. If you don't, when you put this cap on, screw that cap on, it's not going to want to go together easily if, they're, if it's out of whack. Now the screws I used were obviously M4 because it's got to fit in the threaded inserts, but you want to use stainless steel screws and I designed this for a countersunk screw. I used Phillips head, hex head would work just fine. Whatever you've got available to you. So I used the M4 by 10 millimeter countersunk screw. Overall, I'm happy with this. This is pretty easy to use, gets good glue distribution. Uh, one of the things that, that you'll, uh, I think one viewer in particular had asked was, hey, is this compatible with the PZ glue gun? Now I have that system. Uh, I made this to where this would screw on, be the same pattern as say, this is a edge glue nozzle from PZ. So the spacing, maybe not the diameter, but the spacing of and the screw size for this PZ nozzle is the same as this nozzle. So you could either take this nozzle off, screw this one in place, or Rangate and PZ cell replacement caps. I bought this replacement cap. I tried it with my glue nozzle. It works, but with that system, it is way too easy to get too much glue in your mortise. And I actually prefer felt like I had better control with these nozzles using the bottle rather than the glue gun. I think one of the issues is, and let me hold this up, if you look at the size of the hole in my domino nozzle, are these exit holes are one millimeter, whereas in this uh, edge gluing nozzle, they're much smaller. What they are, I don't know. I don't have pen gauges to measure that, but Regardless, this, I got way too much glue in a mortise. And while you can deal with way too much glue on an edge, once it's down in a deep hole, it's hard to get out. You just gotta scrape it out with Q-tips or whatever. And otherwise, you can easily get hydraulic lock on a tight mortise. And uh, that's something that's not desirable in the middle of a glue up. As far as fit, uh, this one right here, I 
Several hours ago, I, I did some testing. Let's see if I can find this here. I'm not sure, I think this is a six. This six will fit in here, but it's not very easy. And the reason is I've already applied glue that's secured. This one, I better use the five millimeter because the six won't fit in a five millimeter hole. Uh, this is about how it should go in. You can get in there and apply glue and it really does a good job of spreading the glue uniformly on these walls with a staggered hole design. And uh, I will leave a link where you can download these STL files to the, uh, to you for your own use. And if you've got a 3D printer, you can print them out. If you do not have a 3D printer uh, and don't know anybody that does have one, I understand that some Staples copy centers and perhaps even UPS copy centers might have 3D printers where they can print things out for you. I know there's online places that do it. I do not know what they charge, but uh, anyway, if I looked at just all these nozzles and one cap and one flushing adapter uh, using PETG filament, which for a one kilogram spool, it cost me about $22, I think, plus tax. When I print all this material out and I just put them out on one bed, just had printed them all at the same time, it cost right around $2 to print the plastic in this. Of course, the heat set inserts are more, the O-rings and screws are also more. I would add cost to that, but material-wise, I can't envision this whole thing with O-rings, heat set insert, and stainless steel screws when you look at a per nozzle basis at being more than about $5 worth of materials uh, total uh, plus tax. So if you've got any uh, questions, post them below. I'll try to answer them. But uh, this, uh, this is working out real well for me. So thank you for your watching and have a great day and we'll catch you on the next one.